I want to thank you for joining me once again out here in the old dusty workshop. I am very excited to get started on today's project. It is going to be an absolutely amazing piece to make. I am very grateful that you are here to watch me make it. Today I am going to be making a uh, Damascus clad San Mai Katana and I am very excited to get started. But first we have to go ahead and get the Damascus made up. I'm going to be making the Damascus out of 15 and 20 and 1080 and using 80 CRV2 for the edge is just for that a little bit of extra toughness as well as edge holding so I'm really excited to get started here I have some incredible materials to make the handle and the saya from I have some koa wood and it is absolutely gorgeous I got a nice big piece that I will be cutting up for all of the uh, handle and saya needs and before we get started I do just want to thank you for watching this video it always helps me uh, to continue doing all of these awesome projects out here in the old dusty workshop especially when you like and subscribe and the biggest thing you can do uh, to support the channel uh, would be to either share this video with a friend uh, you can also leave a comment down below if you have any ideas as to what I should make next but without further ado let's go ahead and get these billets together and I'm going to take you over to the bench and show you what uh, steel we're going to be working with I have all of the steel here now some of this is going to be used for another project um, but I'm just going to be all forge welding it up together. Right here we have uh, three nice stacks of 15 and 20, three big stacks of 1080, and then I have a nice big piece of 80 CRV2. This is going to be for the core. Uh, I'm not going to use it yet. This is going to be the, the final billet, uh, but this is the material that I will be using. So I'm going to start by taking these little pieces of steel. I'm just kind of getting them layered correctly and welding them, you know, kind of tack welding them in place so that we have our billet set up and then uh, it'll be time to start the forge and get these all forge welded, drawn out, restacked, and uh, then we'll make our final billet. So I'm going to take you guys over to my little welding spot over here and uh, we're going to really get started.
After much drying out, I have our two pieces of Damascus. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these all cleaned up. I can cut into their pieces. Then I can sandwich them around the uh, core steel to get our billet of Damascus sand mai. I'm going to go ahead and take these over to the vise and we'll get them all cleaned up. I have the billet all welded up here for our last forge welding. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the forge lit and we are gonna get these welds all set. Before I welded them together, I did weigh them. Uh, so I know that there is, uh, it's actually about six pounds of steel here, which is a lot more than I'll need. It's good to have extra because I'm going to be doing a little bit of ladder pattern, um, kind of get some contrast between the Damascus and the core. So. Uh, will be quite a bit to grind off when I do that, but I still should have some extra.
we have gone from just a pile of little pieces of steel to an entire sword. Now, I knew that keeping the core steel centered would be a little difficult. Um, however, after inspecting everything, it came out really quite nice. I have a couple of spots um, where I will have to grind a little bit more off one side than the other to get the core perfectly centered. Um, but that's that's okay. I, I left the blade really thick and in some spots well over three-eighths of an inch thick So that won't be an issue at all. I'll be able to grind That uh, core to be nice and centered in the blade. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of get Everything cleaned up. I'm gonna profile the the sword. I'm gonna start grinding on those places that need uh, You know more grinding than others and then I will do any final straightening and forging that I need to do and then it will be time to get it ground and heat treated. There are a couple spots where the core is not perfectly centered. Uh, it's just a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind a little bit on the on the wide side so that I can uh, recenter the core back in the forge. So I'm going to get these all ground out and then I'll show you guys how I get those recentered. Just a couple of spots, and then we can go back in the forge. Get the core centered, and then we can really flat grind and uh, profile the entire sword. And at that point, we'll start getting the curvature in. Anywhere I need to uh, forge in any bevels, I'll do that. I'm going to try to avoid forging in the bevels as much as possible uh, because I want the unevenness in the steel to kind of cause a little bit of action in the pattern between the core and the jacket.
the curvature in the blade now. I've let it sit in the uh, forge, slowly cooling, and then I brought it to the anvil, let it cool all the way. It's now cool enough to handle. So I'm going to take you guys in. I'm going to show you a little bit of the pattern that's peeking through, and then it's time to hop on the grinder, get this thing really profiled, and uh, start flat grinding it. So, take you guys in close real quick. You can see a lot of the pattern peeking through there. And there's a good bit coming through right here as well. It'll get even better as I grind into it. So I'm really excited to get that started. And uh, hopefully I should be able to do a nice test etch in the next couple hours. So let's go ahead and jump on the grinder and make a whole lot of dust. <laughs> I did a quick test etch after kind of roughly flat grinding it and you can see that pattern really coming through in some places. Now towards the base of the sword I am actually going to forge this out a little bit wider. I just need a little more width and uh, luckily the edges are very thick. So I'm going to kind of forge this area out just a little bit. And then it'll be time to get all of the last uh, rough grinding done. And it'll be time to thermal cycle, you know, normalize and heat treat. So, just wanted to give you guys a quick little peek of the pattern here. It looks really cool. And I did the test test just to make sure that my core is centered all the way down. And it is. So, I'm very happy about that. I'm going to go ahead and light the forge the last little bit of forging done on this blade.
know you guys saw me take it out and put it in between those pieces of steel and kind of stand on it. Um, that really was just to get us as straight as possible um, because that part's pretty important for grinding. It doesn't need to be perfect at this point, uh, but it needs to be pretty close. It just makes grinding the bevels and flat grinding it a lot easier. And that's a quick and simple way to do that. Now I'm going to jump back on the grinder and uh, I'm going to actually get the bevels all the way ground in. I'm going to do a last little bit of flat grinding and uh, we'll give it a test etch before I do the thermal cycling, well, normalizing first, thermal cycling, then heat treat. Um, but I'll give you guys a real good test etch before that. Did a quick test etch, and uh, you can really see the core peeking out of here. Did mark a couple areas that are a little high, so I still need to do a little bit of flat grinding before the heat treat. But I just had to show you guys the pattern. It looks really cool, and uh, there's a lot more of the core to expose here, uh, just because I left the edge really nice and thick, so that I don't have any edge warping issues in the heat treat. So it'll be a bit more of the core that's exposed in the finished grinding. But we have the core centered along the whole sword, which I can't really emphasize enough is really tough to do. And I'm very pleased with how well I was able to do it. it. Took me a bit of time, but it was well worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the last little bit of flat grinding. And it'll be time to uh, get this in my sword heat treat oven. I have the sword in the oven right now. I am normalizing it. I'm going to bring it up to 1600 degrees twice, and uh, each time I'm going to take it out, hang it on the hook in the corner, let it cool down to uh, uh, down to the point where it turns black, and then it'll go back into the oven. After I am done with both normalizing cycles, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little thermal cycling, and then it'll be time to go into the quench. So I have it clamped in between these two pieces of steel, and that's just going to make sure that it ends up perfectly straight. So, I'm going to let it cool down, and then it'll be time to uh, check straightness, make sure everything's fully hardened, and uh, then if everything's good to go, so then it's time to temper. We are out of the temper. It is the next day, and I just had to show you guys just how awesome this looks. And that is just too cool. Time to start rough grinding and uh, fully exposing the core.
I'm about halfway through the finish grinding on the blade. I just did a test etch to make sure I got all of the decarb off. I've got just about all of it, so it'll be done by the time I am done finish grinding. And uh, you can really see some of the pattern peeking through. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I'll show you more in just a minute. But what I'm going to do now is I am going to get the hibaki made and get the uh, suba made as well. So I'm going to mill out a little channel on here and then I will actually forge the uh, shape of the tang into it. I have a little little tool that I made and that just gives me the best possible fit up. It's nice and quick. I don't have to spend hours with files doing that. So, take you guys over to the little milling machine and I will mill out just a little slot and we'll move to the forge, get that widened and forged out to where it needs to be and then I am going to get the hibaki together. Now these are just mild steel. I'm going to be doing a scotch bright finish on them and then I will blue them so they look absolutely amazing. It's a really cool finish. So, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started on the fittings for this sword. I have forged the guard into the shape of the tang. And you see how just well that works? And it's totally solid right there. Um, I will have to file it out just a little bit to get it up to about there. Um, but this just saves me so much time and it helps my hands not have to file a whole ton of material out of a very difficult to file area. So. What I'm going to do now is get the hibaki built. I have it all set up here in the vise, and I'm just going to kind of tack weld it in place just to hold all the pieces where they should be. And when you make a hibaki out of copper, um, you will generally forge it over the blade and then silver solder the, uh, you know, silver solder the seam shut. When I do a mild steel uh, hibaki, I do just weld it. Uh, that works really, really well and it uh, lets me get a really amazing finish on there. So I'm going to go ahead and tack this in place and then I will take the sword out of the way. This won't transfer any heat to the sword. Um, it's just kind of like a fixture that holds all the pieces there. There we are.
It doesn't transfer any heat to the sword. And now, I can finish this up. And there's the top. This will all get ground down and finished. At this point, the blade is finished ground, ready for hand sanding. The hibaki and guard are ready for their finishing. I'm going to do them in a blued finish, so it's going to look really cool. Excited to show you guys when those are done. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually going to get the handle fit up, just so I can get everything exactly where I want it. And uh, then at that point, it's just time to do the seiya and all the finishing work. So I'm very excited. I'm going to show you guys something with the hibaki. So it is angled, so it's thicker back towards here, and thinner towards where the uh, actual blade starts. And that really just helps it with uh, sheathing. And so the, all of this is angled so that it goes into the seiya nice and smooth. It's kind of a cool little geometrical thing I like doing with my hibakis lately. It looks really cool. And it does actually really help with uh, putting the sword in the seiya. So I'll take you guys over to the vise, and we are going to get the uh, koa handle scales off it up. shape the handle and then I'm going to inlay the ray skin. So I just kind of cleaned up the edges with a little 120 grit just to kind of break the edges over a little bit. We'll get totally hand sanded after I have the uh, 
area cut out for the inlay. But you can see that that koa is just absolutely beautiful. So now I'm going to take this stencil and I'm going to use this to scribe where I want the inlay to be. And then I will carve that out. And then I actually use the same stencil to cut the ray skin so that the uh, fit is really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this scribed on and start getting that all carved out. There we go, that'll work for now. I will flatten it out a little bit more with some files, and then I'm going to finish the handle. So this corner will get rounded down just a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and carve out the other side so that I can uh, get this ready for the inlay. I'm getting very close on getting the inlays all fit up. It does take a couple of times just to get everything perfect, uh, but each time I just peel this off, kind of like that, and then I will kind of rough lay it in here, see where I need to remove a little bit more. There's a little bit right here, and then I just re-glue it to this, go back to the grinder, and just kind of thin out those areas that need to have a little bit more removed. And once these are fit up perfect, I will glue them into the handle. And then uh, at that point, it's just time to get the blade finished and uh, wrap the handle and the sword will be done. I have the ray skin all laid in here. I glued it, and that just looks absolutely awesome. And this will get a handle wrap over it so it'll look even cooler. I just put the blade in the acid. You can really see some of that pattern in person. So I'm gonna let that etch for about 20 minutes and then it'll be time to neutralize it and we can really see what that pattern looks like. I wanna show you guys what it's looking like out of the first etch. And that is just really cool. Now I am gonna repolish it, and then I will do another etch. I might do that a couple times until I get the depth of etch that I want. And then I'll do one final etch just to darken all of the uh, deeper etched areas. But that is looking really incredible.
I went ahead and I fit the uh, handle to the tang, and I also added a uh, small notch there for when I wrap the handle. The ends of the wrap will uh, tie off inside of that little slot. You have it all fit up here in the Saya. Just kind of glued it all together. And so now, what I have to do is I have to do the final uh, bluing on the hardware. And then, and one of the next things I'm going to do is I'm going to do a coffee etch on the sword. It's been etched several times in the ferric chloride just to give us the depth that we want. And so now, I'm going to darken all of the high carbon steel with some coffee. And that is going to really make the contrast pop. So that is what the coffee etch does. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, kind of shape the saya and then I'm going to darken the hardware. It'll be time to glue the handle, get it all wrapped, and uh, finish the uh, all the hand sanding on the Saya. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the grinder, and uh, we're going to get this all shaped up. I have sanded it up to 150 grit on the belt. And so now, I'm going to start the hand sanding at 120 grit. And we're going to bring it all the way up to about 400. We're about halfway done, and it is looking absolutely incredible. So I'm going to finish hand sanding this, and then I'm going to color the fittings for the sword.
I have the handle wrapped on this katana. And I think that that just looks absolutely awesome. I did also get the Saya pretty much finished. So at this point, all I have to do is get the, uh, not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, I believe it's pronounced the Kirigata, and get that installed onto the Saya. And then this one will be ready to be sharpened, and it'll be done. I did just want to give a quick overview. of how the pattern is looking. It looks just incredible. And that is what a coffee etch does. So I have the piece of uh, horn that I'm going to be using for the uh, Kirigata. Now I'm going to start shaping it and then I'm going to drill out the, uh, the hole. It's actually going to be three holes is what it's going to start as. And then I will use some burrs and some files to open it up and get it to the shape that I want. And then it'll be time to uh, get it all finished, polished, and uh, fit it onto the Saya. Uh, there's the basic shape. So at this point, I am just going to be cleaning up with some sandpaper. And then, uh, once I have all of the deep scratches removed, I'll bring it up to probably about 320 grit. Now this is just about done. I'm going to start getting it fit into the Saya. I'm gonna do that with uh, I'm gonna do that with some files, and then I will get this totally finished up, I'll get it installed, and we are ready to sharpen the sword.
let's say it is done. And that just looks absolutely incredible. Pattern is incredible as well. I'm just super pleased with how that turned out. And this is definitely one of the most incredible swords I have ever made. I am very pleased with how everything turned out. It just looks and feels amazing. Let me give you guys a quick overview just of the sword. And that is just incredible. I am very, very pleased with how that all turned out. So I want to thank you for watching this episode of Let's Make a Sword. I have had such an amazing time building that incredible katana. I have many more very exciting projects in the works, and uh, hopefully I will be posting some videos a bit more frequently now. I'm kind of trying to catch up in my books and make a little bit of... Uh, free time for some fun projects so i'm really excited to show all of you guys what i have in store and if you have any ideas for future projects i'll leave those down in the comments below i want to thank you one last time you guys have a wonderful rest of your day i'll catch you on the next episode